Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for that song reminding us that your love will never fail. And whatever you have done for other people, you will do for us. And we come this afternoon with faith, trust, and confidence in you. Believing that your promises are still yes and amen. And that you have not changed. That the things you did in the past, your love compels you to do even those things even today. And Lord, we are praying that will bless us abundantly, abundantly together today in Jesus' name. Stretch forth your mighty hand and distribute all blessings that are needed to your own people. In Jesus' name we pray. We praise the name of the Lord who has brought us to this point. In this special seminar of the month on healing, signs, and wonders. Already the Lord has been blessing a number of people. And testimonies are reaching us of the goodness of the Lord. And we've come to this point in our progress on the seminar. And today I want to talk to you on something that is very essential and important in the Bible. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit himself will give you a revelation of divine truth concerning this subject. We come to consider this significant revelation relating to the believer's authority in prayer. And it's concerning the power of Jesus' name. Before Jesus went to the cross, he gave believers the unlimited, unqualified use of his name in prayer. And as he rose from the dead, just before he ascended, to be with the Father in heaven, to sit upon the throne that was specially reserved for him, that nobody ever could sit on that throne. And before he went to occupy that special place, of intimate relationship and rulership with the Father. He did tell his own disciples that they could use his name in receiving blessings from the Father and in casting out devils and receiving healing from his hand. In the Bible, names were very significant. When a person gave his name to another one, that meant authority to act as an agent or as a representative on behalf of that individual. To do something in the name of another person means to act on the ground of his authority. This is referred to as the power of attorney. The power of attorney in legal or business matters means that the person that is acting as a representative, acting on the ground of the authority of another fellow, is actually is seeming like is identical with that other person. You see him, it's like you have seen the other fellow. And when Jesus gave us the power of attorney, that means that he gave us the legal right the gospel right, the redemptive right and the family right, if you like, the kingdom right, that we can use his name in prayer. What does that mean? It means when we stand in his name, it's like he himself had come back to this place at this time to solve the problem we're trying to solve. His name symbolizes His presence. And when we stand and command in His name, it's like He Himself, in the presence and the power that He ever manifested, is standing and praying the same prayer that we are praying. That means then, that the believer has authority, Untold, unfathomed, 
undiscovered authority yet concerning the name of Jesus Christ. If we can stand like he stood, if we can stand where he stood, if we can stand how he stood, and we can say what he said, and it will be effective as if he was saying it, because we say it in his name, it is power yet unknown, yet untested, yet untried by the majority of Christians living on the face of the earth. And that's what we'll come to today. The power issued or decreed in the name of Jesus. We'll consider three points. One, the exaltation of his name. The exaltation of his name. There are many names today. Names that to mention in different circles, at different places. That every time you mention that name, it holds power. It wakes you up. And you know that that name has authority. That name has symbol. It has power. Wherever you are mentioning it. But of all the names you can mention, in the spiritual world, in the intellectual world, in the business world, in the world in which we live today, or in any empire that ever lived, of all the names you can mention, there is a name that is exalted far above every other name that has ever been named, and it is the name of Jesus Christ. And this afternoon, we're going to spend some time to talk about the exaltation of that name. Number two, endowment through his name. Endowment through his name. I want to tell you that whoever you are, and whatever you have got, whatever you have achieved, for every man that lives on the face of the earth, there are some things he will never have except it is given unto him. No matter how powerful, no matter how mighty, no matter how rich, there are some things you will never have except it is given unto you. And all those people of Bible days, some of them were rich, marvelously rich. Some of them were great, very, very great. But until God, out of His hidden resources, gave them some things, there were things they could never have. And will I tell you that whoever we are, there are some things we'll never have except it's been given to us and there's something that has been given to us and there's nothing, there's no equal like age. David wanted to go to battle and then he asked, can I have a sword there? And he said, there is no other sword here except this sword of Goliath. He said, give that to me. There is nothing like age. And for the believer, that stands at the time of battle for the believer that comes in front of difficulties for the believer that stands before a mountain and he says give me something give me something that i need to use in the day of battle and then we tell him there is nothing here except the name of jesus he says give it to me there is nothing like age endowment through his name and except it is given unto you, whatever else you possess, this name that is given to the believer, there is nothing like it. Number three, exploits in his name. Exploits in his name. When a man has a brain and a training with a pen, he does something with a pen. When a soldier has been trained and equipped and given the weapons, he does something with the weapons. When a businessman has established business and has been given some money, some capital, he does something with the capital. And when a woman that has got married has been given all the possession by the husband, she does something with it. And when a believer 
has been called specially by the Lord and that believer has been given the name of Jesus, he must do something with it. Exploits. That's what you do with that name that is given to you. Exploits in his name. One, the exaltation. Two, the endowment. And three, the exploits in his name. Let's start from number one. Exaltation of his name. In Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The disciples, at the time of the betrayal of Jesus Christ, felt weak. They felt rejected. They felt intimidated. They were fearful. And after Jesus Christ had been taken and crucified and he died and he was buried, they never could come out. They were afraid because they saw what the power of man, the power of the law, the Roman law, the power of religion, the Jewish religion could do to a good man. And because of that they felt, no matter how good we are, there is a power in this world that seems against the people that are good. They were afraid. They closed their doors. They never thought they could do anything. They felt life had come to an end. They were not even willing to live. There was nothing to live for. They were afraid of their very existence. And the ministry that God had given them, Christ had given them before he left, they were afraid, they felt they could not do anything. But eventually, on the third day, an angel came from heaven, rolled away the stone, and Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, he rose from the dead, and all those soldiers, they fell down. Power that passed power. Power that conquered power. Heavenly power with heavenly authority had come and they bended low as a symbol to tell you that anywhere after that resurrection where the power of Christ is mentioned, it will crush every other power. And then the women got to the grave, to the sepulcher, and the angels told them, He is not here, He is not here, another power greater than Roman power. Another power greater than the authority of Pilate and the authority of Caiaphas had come into this grave is risen. Go and meet him in Galilee. And they were waiting in Galilee. And here he came in their midst. And he saw Peter, looked at him in the face. And he saw Matthew, looked at him in the face. And he saw all the other people that ran because of fear, because of the fear of the Roman power, the fear of the mob, and the fear of the people that took Jesus. And he announced to them and said, All power, when you say all, there is no other part left. All power and authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. When he made that announcement, they knew that they were face to face with the resurrected, glorified Christ. And things have changed. He has risen from the dead to die no more. And he has got power that he will never lose. And he had the authority to transmit that power and to give it to whomsoever he will. Before I talk about the transmission of that power, I want you to still see the exaltation of that name in Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 9. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. When I was, when I was young, there were names I feared. Why? 
Because I'd seen what those names had done. What the people that bore that name, what they did to other people. I've seen when I was very young, a masquerade beat somebody until that person would almost die. And because of what I saw that the masquerades had done, every time I heard that name, fear came into my heart. I've seen witches who oh, are very, very young, very, very young. I've seen them manifest terrible powers of darkness. Terrible powers of darkness in the village where I grew up. And every time that I heard the name witch, and I remembered what they did before I was born again, fear came into my spine. And I've seen what men that were wicked, wicked, and at, that, at the same time, the, the person I'm thinking of now, wicked and drunk at the same time. And I've seen what those drunken, wicked men can do. And when we were very young, every time you mentioned that name, we trembled. We trembled. And we as adults, we have seen what some names have done in the world. Names that terrify you. Because they held powers of darkness in their hand. If they opened their mouth to curse, you know that that person is finished. And every time you hear that name, you are afraid. But there is a name greater than those names. If you have this name, you don't fear that name. If you have this name, you are not panicking because of those other names. The name of Jesus. That God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord look at verse 10 that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth and of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That name has been exalted above every other name. There are some names that medical people fear. Even though they are medical doctors, they fear those names. They fear those names. A fear is deep in their hearts. Every time they have, they mention the name cancer. It's terrible. Because as medical doctor, when he hears that name, he knows that's finished. And he fear that name AIDS. A-I-D-S. They know it's incurable. You have that name with you, then... The grave is very near. That's what they say. And anytime they hear the name, diabetes, they know that once you mention that name and you attach it to a human being, that's finished. You mention kidney failure and you say those functions, those functions are no more possible because the kidneys are dead. Once you mention that name, a doctor says that's finished. But there is a name above every name. Above every name in heaven, above every name on earth, above every name under the earth, above the name of anything, anywhere, anytime. And it's the name of Jesus. That name is exalted. And if you have that name, congrats for you. You'll never be defeated again. If you have that name, I rejoice with you. The days of sorrow are over. The days of defeat are over. The days of oppression are over because you have been given a name that is above every name that are the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee. What does every knee mean? Every knee. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. In Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 20 and verse 21, which is wrought 
in Christ, whom he raised when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality. I fear those names when I was an unbeliever. You mentioned principality, power, another power, might, dominion. When you mention all those names, fear will run into the very center of the hearts of many people. But here we are told that Jesus Christ, when he rose from the dead, and he's been raised far above all principality and power and dominion and might and every name that is named. Do you see something there? The name that the Bible is talking about when it says the name of Jesus Christ is raised above, exalted above every other name. It's not just talking about the name of your neighbor or the name of somebody else or the name of a politician. It's talking about the names that spells fear. What are some of those names? Some of those names are reaching here. It says principality. That's the name. Power. Might. Dominion, and then he says, whatever else it is called, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, that is, for the sake of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. In Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he has made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, and sat down, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. There is hidden wealth of untold treasure, of unknown treasure in the name of Jesus. I'm praying the Spirit of God will open your understanding to perceive and to understand the authority hidden in the name of Jesus. You'll never be the same anymore. A man was sick, so sick that he couldn't speak out, so sick he couldn't make any movement. He was sick in every part of his body. And somebody came to his bedside. He was almost dying. And the person told him, Remember the name of Jesus. Remember the name of Jesus. He couldn't talk. Nobody to pray for him. And was lying down there almost dying. What will he do? Then he began to just wiggle his finger, his finger, just like this, just like this. And the fellow that was talking to him didn't understand what he was doing, just wiggling his finger like this. And eventually, in a short time, he rose up strong, well healed. When he got healed, people asked him, they said, what happened to you? Nobody prayed for you. Nobody did anything around you. What is it? What's the meaning of that thing you were doing when you were wiggling your fingers? He said, because I couldn't talk in my mind, I told the Lord silently in my mind, if I do my hand like this, I am calling Jesus. I am calling Jesus. And he just kept on doing his hand like that, silently, internally, calling Jesus. And the power of Jesus struck him. He rose up. He was well, completely well. An accident took place somewhere and the fellow a man he died he went away and he went right to the presence of God 
and he saw those angels and he saw all those places the beautiful places that were singing about about heaven when jesus said believe in me believe in god and believe in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and when i've gone and prepared a place for you i will come again so that i'll take you to myself where i'm where i am there you will be also that man went right into the presence of god but his body was still here at the site of the accident and his sister came there and his sister saw the ghastly accident and he saw that his her brother was gone. Her brother was dead. And that sister knelt down and tried to pray. She couldn't pray. Tears were coming to the eyes. And because she couldn't pray, she said, Lord, don't let him go. And then called Jesus. And called Jesus. And called just Jesus. She couldn't say any other thing. The, the overwhelming sorrow will not, allow he, will not allow her to say any other thing. Just stayed there at that place where the brother had accident and the brother had gone. And the brother was already in heaven. And she was saying, Jesus, Jesus. Then the messengers in heaven, they, they called the man. And they spoke to him and he said, you must go back to the world. He said, no, I don't want to go back to the world because I'm all right here. And then they, they opened the curtain. They said, look at your sister. She is calling that name. She is calling that name. Because of that name, you have to go back. And that man woke up and was raised from the dead. That's the power in that name. Smith Hugo Souls, many, many years ago, this person was sick, very, very sick. So sick that he couldn't rise up. And Smith Wigglesworth was called. And he, Smith Wigglesworth called the apostle of faith. He died in the 1940s. And he called other people around. And he held hands together like in a circle. And that man was inside there. What did they do? Were they praying, casting out devils? No, not at all. Smith Wigglesworth held the hands of all those people and in unison they were just calling Jesus. They didn't pray. They didn't say anything. The, the thing was overwhelming and the man was so sick. All they were saying, Jesus. Jesus. And when they called that name, the presence of God, the power of God came into that room. And Smith Wigglesworth said, there is it, there is it, take it, you are healed. And the woman did not uh, get up. And he stayed there and called that name again, Jesus. And again the power fell upon that man. And then the Smith said, that's it, that's it, the power of God is there because of that name. And the man did not get up. And the man was mumbling some words. And Smith Wigglesworth put his ears near the mouth of the man and saw that the man was confessing his sin. And after he had confessed his sin and said, Lord, I've been bitter. I've been sorrowful. I've been accusing you that you did so much like this to me that I'm so sick like this. But now that your power falls down upon me, forgive me and let me rise up. And when Smith Wiggles was knew that the man was only confessing his sin, he didn't disturb him. And then he held the hands of those people. They didn't pray. They didn't say any other thing. Just the name. Just the name. Just the name. And Jesus. And that man got up. The power of God is great. There is power in that name. Jesus has been given a name. A name above every name. That are the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And all tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. How did he get that name? Because he defeated the devil, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open show of them. He triumphed over them in age in the cross. And because of that, the Father has highly exalted him and given him a special name, a name with special authority in heaven and on earth. Oh, if the believers can easily discover, only discover the power, the authority, the wealth, the riches, the mystery, the majesty in the name of Jesus, you'll never be the same again. Anytime you get into any problem, take that name with you. Take that name with you. Take that name with you and call that name. It's more than just singing about it. It has power. It has authority. 
it has healing. All the riches of glory, they are hidden inside that name. And when you take that name and you use that name, things will change in your life. Why? Because the name means so much to the Father. Anytime the Father hears that name, He'll do anything. He'll do anything. You know why? I want you to picture, you are a human being, but picture this. That somebody had been with you since you were very, very young. And this person never offended you. He has shown the greatest love to you. And he has did, done the credible in obeying you. Even when it cost him his life, it's, he still obeyed you. And you have grown to love him. You have grown to love him. And then when he is away, and somebody came in his name and said, I know so and so. So and so told me that if I used his name, that you love him, that you will give me shelter, you will say because of that name. I cannot hear that name and hold my peace. I cannot hear that name and tie my hand. I cannot hear that name and be passive and be silent. Because of that name you have mentioned, anything you want, here you are. That's how it is for the Father. Oh, the Father loves that name. Because Jesus had been with the Father from the beginning. And when humanity was lost, the Father searched in all of heaven and said, Who will go? Who will I send that will die for these people? And the Son, Jesus Christ. The express image of the Father. The very heart and the love of the Father said, Father, I will go. And he came. And he accepted to be born in the manger. Oh, the Father loves that name. The Father loves that name because of what Jesus had done. He was in the manger and he never regretted it. And then he lived his life. All those 30 years he was quiet, not doing anything, just growing up, doing the will of his Father. He never said no to the Heavenly Father. He said, I always did the things that are pleasing in his sight. The Father loves that name. And then he went to the cross and he knelt at Gethsemane. He said, this cup is bitter. Let for me alone. I would have said, why should I drink it? But, Father, I've never disobeyed you. I'll do it. Oh, it was something. And he went to the cross. And when he had the sins of all the world upon him, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But, after he said that, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. That's why the Father loves that name. And on the third day, the Father sent all the angels that were necessary and said, Go there and raise up my son. And he rose up. The moment he rose up and Mary wanted to grab him, he said, No, don't grab me yet. I've not gone to the Father. I must see him. And he went to the Father. The jubilation in heaven. The joy in heaven. The shouting in heaven. The prince of life had come. The heart of the Father had come. And the father was happy. And the father said, my son, you did all that. Anytime I hear your name, my heart will move. I've given you a name above every name. Anybody that mentions your name, because of you, on your behalf, on your account, I'll give him anything. That name means so much to the father. And my brother, my sister, when you pray today, and you call on the name of God, I said, Lord, do this for me, and you mention that name. That's all. That's all. That name, oh, is delicate, delicate name. That's the thing that taps the harp in the heart of the Father. Just mention that name. Once he hears that name, you've got what you want. Because it means so much to the Father. What does it mean to the devil? That's another story. That's another story. The devil tried from the Old Testament so that he will stop that son of the virgin, that seed of the woman from coming to this world. And eventually he came and the devil fought and fought. He fought for thousands of years that that name will not take root, that that Jesus Christ will not take root. But eventually he failed and he tried to bargain and he went to him and he said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Just bow down to me. He said, not on your life. 
I've committed my life to the Lord. Only to God will I bow. And the devil was afraid. He had never seen a man like that before. And this son of man, the son of David, David was different. Then he went to the cross. Oh, it was a battle. If it was a battle. And it was the fulfillment of what the father said. That he'll bruise the head of the devil. And on the cross, it was a deadly blow. A terrible blow on the head of the devil. Let me ask you. If somebody bruised your head, will you ever forget? Let me tell you an experience. It was 1959. And I was told to stay with somebody during the holidays. And instead of allowing me to just stay with him, he said, you can't stay like that. Go to the farm. And I went to the farm. And uh, because there was an unbeliever, and I was an unbeliever too, he had tied a bottle. He put something inside that bottle and tied it up on the pole so that if any thief came into that uh, farm, that thing that he tied in the bottle will drive the thief away. Something in the bottle. And he gave me a cutlass to go and weed in the field. And I, and I didn't know that that bottle was there. And I bent down. And as I was weeding, the cutlass struck the pole that they tied the bottle on. And the bottle dropped from the way they placed it, they, they tied it, and bruised my head. The mark is still there. I'll never forget. You know the devil? When the devil said was blown, that time he will never forget if i don't forget how can he forget that deadly blow that deadly blow at the cross of calvary that jesus blew his head and because he'll never forget anytime you mention that name he'll tremble anytime you mention that name all the evil spirits will tremble. Anytime you mention that name, all the witches and wizards will tremble. And you have that name in your mouth. You will never be the same again. You have that name in your heart. You will never be the same again. Anytime there's trouble, call that name. Anytime there's sickness, call that name. Anytime there's calamity, call that name. Anytime there's evil power, call that name. That name has authority in heaven and on earth and under the earth. It has authority with the Father. It has authority with principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. It has authority over the prince of the power of the air. And it has authority over all men on earth. The greatness of the name. That name has within it the fullness of the Godhead and the wealth of all eternities. Number two, endowment through his name. If that name is so great, what has Christ done with the name? Has he used the name for himself alone? Is he selfishly holding and keeping that name to himself? Let's see in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. Whatsoever you ask the Father in that name, I told you, that name, it touches the heart of the Father. You can fast and pray for days. But the moment you come across that name, and you use that name, and that name is coming out of your heart, and you have faith and confidence and trust in that name, and you're not just calling that name, like other people just call the name, without its meaning anything to them. You really call the name, and the Father hears it. That's such a sage. Because whatsoever... You will ask in his name. The Father will give it unto you. In John chapter 16. Verses 23 and 24. And in that day. 
ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Let me give you an illustration of the use of the name in the Old Testament. In Esther chapter 8. Esther chapter 8. At this time, Mordecai, one of the chiefest of the Jews, was in trouble. He had offended the enemy. Esther had not directly offended the enemy, but because she was a Jew, she also had part of the problem. And all the other Jews in the kingdom of Ahasuerus, they had, robed, they had been robed in. That the trouble was awaiting everyone. In fact, their day of death had been written down. The enemy had decreed, the enemy had written, that there is nothing that will change this. That the Jews in Shushan and in all the 127 provinces of King Ahasuerus, they will die. Because the highest power, the greatest power of the empire had signed for the death of all the Jews, Mordecai included. And Haman knew that the end had come for the Jews. But even though they almost lost hope, they began to run around. Mordecai came to the palace at the gate. Esther knew about it and heard that Mordecai was having a morning robe on. And Esther said to Mordecai and said, What's the matter with you, Mordecai? Why are you sorrowful? Why are you putting morning robe in the gate of the king? It must never be done. And, and he said, But we are dead. I am mourning for our death. I am mourning because the day and the time of our death has been sealed by Haman, by the seal of the king. And said, talk to the king. Maybe we'll come out of this. Esther said, I'm afraid. Because if the king doesn't call you, no matter who you are, if you go to him, then they'll cut off your head. And Mordecai said, don't you think that you will escape in that place? And you don't know whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. If you hold your peace at, that, at this time, enlargement or deliverance or freedom, liberty will come. For the Jews from another source, but you and your father's house, Esther, you will be forgotten. And Esther said, if it is that serious, then help me. Go back to the other Jews and tell them to fast three days and three nights, not eating and not drinking water. And I and my maidens will fast also. If I perish, I perish. You won't perish. You won't die. If the name is available for you, you won't die. If the promises of God are in your mouth, you won't die. You are saying, well, already all the witches and wizards, they have determined, they have even distributed my flesh in all their shrines, and they have said, I am going. You are not going. You are not dying. Because of the name of Jesus, because of the authority of Jesus, because of the power of Jesus, you cannot die. You will not die. And so Esther went to the king. It's a long story. In fact, the whole story is like a unit. You need to read the whole book yourself, the book of Esther, just some few chapters. But eventually, Haman died. Say why? Well, because. The enemies of the people of God, they always die. You remember Pharaoh? He died. You remember Balaam that caused the people of God? He died. You remember Nebuchadnezzar? He died. You remember Goliath? He died. You remember Herod? He died. You remember Pilate? He died. Remember Nero? He died. Name them one by one. All the people that set themselves against the people of God. The people of God will remain alive. 
they died. Haman was dead. And then Esther came to the king. And as Esther came to the king, she began to plead for her people. It's a beautiful story. Esther chapter 8, look at this, from verse 3. And Esther spake yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with, it, with tears to put away the mischief of Haman, the Agagite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then king, the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it pleased the king, and if I found favor or grace in his sight, and it things seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman. You know why we're here today? To reverse the letters written by Satan. You know why we're here today? To reverse the x-rays of the doctor in your hand. You know why we're here today? To reverse all your names that are taken to all those places, all those shrines, to reverse everything. This afternoon, we have come to reverse everything that is bad in your life. Tomorrow will be well. All the tears, all the things that Satan wrote, all the things that evil powers wrote against your life, everything is going to be reversed. And so Esther said, King, all that I'm asking for is that you will reverse the writing which has been written by Haman, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. Verse 7, then King Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Amon, him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you. In the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. That verse, short, simple, straightforward, it was a thing that reversed all that Haman had intended to do. This message, short, simple, straightforward, it is a thing that will reverse every cause and every negative thing in your life. Tomorrow will be different. Today is a turning point. All the bad luck, all the evil, all the darkness, they are reversed today. Because you have a name, the name of Jesus. And so the king said, Write ye for the Jews as it liketh you. In the king's name, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, May no man reverse any prayer I pray. In that name, no witch can reverse it. You know, many years ago, I was seeing a particular church, White Garment Church, that's many years ago. In 62, 62, 63, I will be beating drum and dancing, wearing a white garment, not wearing a shoe. The prophet will rise up and tell us that we should begin to pray. That the witches, they are collecting all the prayers we were praying. And because of that, it was difficult to pray that night. I will sing again, roll on the ground again, and cry again, run around the church building again, and say, oh, these witches are very bad. They have collected, they have swallowed up, all our prayers and they tell those um, lay readers and the wardens to go and bring a can and put incense in and begin to blow the incense so as to drive the witches away who are catching our prayers away thank god it doesn't happen like that now they can't reverse it once we say it once we decree it 
Once we pray that prayer, nobody can catch it away. We stand in the authority of the name of Jesus. We stand in the anointing of the Spirit of God and of the power that is invested in the name of Jesus. And it says, for the writing that is written with the king's name, sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. That was enough for us and Mordecai. They went off and they wrote a decree. They made it strong, just like they wanted it. And they fixed in the signature of the name of the king. And he put his signature, his signet ring. And in verse 10 he wrote in the king Sahasuerus' name. Sealed it with the king's ring. And sent the letters by post on all bags. And riders on mules, camels and young dromedaries. In verse 15. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel and of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad and the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor and in every province and in every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came they thought it was his decree it was the decree of Esther and Mordecai. When I pray in the name of Jesus, the devil will look at it as the prayer of Jesus himself. When you decree in the authority of the name of Jesus, the devils will look at it as a decree coming from the mouth of Jesus himself. The name of Jesus makes your prayer strong and irresistible. That's why we're given the name. All that is invested in the name of Jesus belongs to you today. The authority that he had, the authority that he won on the cross of Calvary, has been delegated to you in the use of the name. We represent him on earth, and he represents us in heaven. All he was, all he did, all he achieved, and all he is now, is invested in that name and God's eternal throne is behind every statement every command every decree given in that name what next exploits in the name mark chapter 16 verse 17 these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover because of that name. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And this afternoon, the devils will be subject unto us through his name. That name is with you. You are using it this afternoon. And then in John, chapter 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Do you have anything to ask in the same this afternoon? That I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Remember? Everything that is written in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is like a decree of the King, of the King himself. And the prayer you pray this afternoon, in the name of the King, in the name of Jesus Christ, is a decree. Do you have any decree in your mouth? Do you have any word of authority in your mouth? Rise up and say it. Let it be a decree. Let it be a decree. 
You don't want barrenness in your life, decree against it in the name. You don't want sickness in your life, decree against it in the name. You don't want poverty in your life, decree against it in the name. You don't want a bad luck in your life, decree against it in his name. You don't want sickness, infirmity anymore in your life, decree against it in his name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Don't remain sick, get rid of the sickness. Don't remain oppressed, get rid of the oppression. Don't remain a slave of Satan. Come out of his nature. Break yourself loose. Out of the chain of the devil. You are a free man. You are a free woman. You have a decree in your mouth. Speak it out. You have authority in your heart. Let it out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's bad and eyes closed. After this afternoon, don't talk about your sickness. After this afternoon, don't talk about your barrenness. After this afternoon, don't talk about the devil is troubling me. Let's forget the devil. Let's forget the devil and decree. After this afternoon, don't talk about my problem. Let's decree it and it is finished. And the devil cannot change it. The devil cannot change it. The devil cannot change it. Amen. Whatsoever you want, your husband run away. Run away from home and let you alone. Caring for yourself. Pay for the house rent. Don't you have a decree in your mouth? After this afternoon, that husband will run back. Amen. Sickness in your body is not allowed. It is not allowed. It is not allowed. Barrenness is not allowed. This is the church of the living God. And we don't welcome barrenness here. We don't welcome poverty here. We don't welcome oppression of the devil here. This is the church of the living God. And we'll be decree in our mouth. Let us pray now. Let us pray now. Remember, 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 remember. What we say this afternoon, it will never be reversed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. You gave us the unlimited, unqualified use of the name of Jesus. And we come in that authority with the decree in our mouth. Lord, this decree becomes your decree. This authority becomes your authority. Therefore, Lord, I speak in that same authority and I give out the word of decree. Against all sicknesses in the bodies of the people that are here. All you sicknesses, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are barren. Today is the end. Oh Lord, today is the end. You said everywhere the commandment of the decree of the king came. It took effect. And right now I pray that this decree will come into the bodies of these people. And all these women that are married and they have been barren until this time. Oh Lord, right now, all the things that need to be changed in the body of the husband, in the body of the wife, change it in Jesus' name. Take away the barrenness away from them in Jesus' name. Manifest your power in their bodies. The women that their husbands have run away from home, fooling around with other women, and you're saying, well, uh, I will never come back, I will never come back. We reject all that in Jesus' name. And therefore, right now, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power, the power of the Lord, the anointing that breaks the yoke, oh Lord, we pray. 
We pray that you will catch all those men and bring them back to their wives in Jesus' name. All their rebellion, all their resistance, all their rejection, all the things they are saying that they never be reunited again with their wife, we cancel it this afternoon. In the name of Jesus, it is cancelled. And Lord, we pray that right now, these wives who are here, they'll be making preparation to receive those husbands. And the men that are here, and the wives have run away from home, and they're saying they'll never come back. Holy Ghost, catch them. Bring them back in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that individual who has somebody that is having mental problems, somebody very close to you, having that, uh, that insanity in the head. Lord, I speak against those evil spirits tormenting that individual. And I command you evil spirits tormenting that individual, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that individual that is having stroke, that your mighty power, your mighty hand, will come upon that leg, will come upon that hand, will come upon that part of the brain, and it will be all right in Jesus' name. I pray for that child that has never walked since that child was born. Lord, I pray your healing power, your miracle power, will come upon that child, and that child will rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Those eyes, that left eye that is having the problem over there, that cataract, that blindness in that left eye, I cancel it. And I command your blindness. Come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray. The person over there that has the high blood pressure. And I'm asking right now. That everything that is called blood problem. Blood sickness. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying for that individual that they say has bad luck. And every time a bad thing will happen, terrible thing will happen. And then I've been going around and I've said, well, that is, uh, somebody did this and somebody did this. We cancel that. Lord, I pray right now, all the ill luck, all the bad luck, all the things from the devil, they are canceled and rolled away from that individual in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that child of God. Always sorrowful, even when she doesn't know the reason why. Bearing about fear, sorrow, suffering, uncertainty, all the time, never enjoying the Christian life. You devil, you are a liar. And I command you to remove your hand away from the life of that sister in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the victories that your people have decreed this afternoon. The deliverances they have decreed this afternoon. The prosperity they have decreed this afternoon. The healing they have decreed this afternoon. The joy and satisfaction they have decreed this afternoon. Oh Lord, I pray that you will confirm the decree of their mouth in Jesus' name. As they go, let them go with triumphant spirit. Victorious spirit. Let them go with the power of God in their lives. And Lord, everywhere they go, enemies will fall before them. Evil powers will fall before them. They'll never fear again. Lord, I pray, any time there seems to be any trouble, stir up, stir up the use of the name of Jesus in their hearts. And from now till we see you face to face, make every word of their mouth that they issue forth in the name of Jesus be a decree that will never be reversed. Thank you, Lord, because of what you have done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.